Join me this week as we demystify X-ray terminology. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week we're going to do a little bit different format, which is we're just going to break down some terminology that surrounds X-Ray. We've used X-Ray in the past couple of MetPy Mondays, and I realized that some of the terminology, though they're words that we're all familiar with, can be somewhat foreign. So we're going to look at what X-Ray really means with some of these words, and that will get us well on our way to utilizing it even better in future episodes. So what I'm going to do is first import X-Ray, and then from metpy.cbook, I'm going to import get test data. We're going to use X-Ray's open dataset method, and then the get dataset to open a subset of the GFS during Hurricane Irma. And you might see a warning here that this data is being downloaded if you haven't downloaded it before into your local cache. Now, the reason that we're not going too deep into any of that is we've talked about opening X-ray datasets before, we've used get test data before, and they're really not the point here. But you need those so you can go ahead and play with the same data that we're looking at. All right, so the first word that we're going to talk about is dataset. And that is what we fundamentally get from this. The name implies that. Open data set. So a data set is sort of like a NetCDF file. There are some differences, and X-Array's terminology does differ from NetCDF and CF conventions somewhat. But fundamentally, the data set is just a collection of data arrays that have dimensions that they can be aligned along. So if you're thinking of temperature, humidity, and some other variables that all have, say, latitude and longitude associated with them, those would be data arrays that could be built into a data set. Data sets have a few things. They have data variables, they have dimensions, they have coordinates, and they have attributes. And we're going to talk about all of those. So if we look at the data that we opened up here, we get this really nice representation here in the notebook. We see that it is indeed an X-ray data set. Here are our dimensions, isobaric one, isobaric three, latitude, longitude, and time one. So we'll talk about this a little bit more with dimensions, but I wanna point out there are two isobaric dimensions here. And that's because not all of the variables share the same isobaric dimensions. We might not calculate relative humidity on the same vertical grid as we do, uh, say, the vertical component of wind. We might care about those on two very different scales in the model. But we'll get to dimensions a little bit more. All right, what about coordinates? So coordinates here, we see things like time, ref time, latitude, isobaric three, isobaric one, and longitude. You'll notice that some of these are bolded, and those bolded ones match dimensions. And we'll investigate that a little more deeply as well. And then we have our data variables. So things like vertical velocity, pressure, isobaric, relative humidity, isobaric, and so on. So these are the actual data that the model output that we're looking at. And we see the data types here as well. If we expand attributes down here, we see we've got 13 attributes, and these are metadata for the whole data set. So they're things that are true across all of those variables. For example, the originating source, the grib table version that this came from, uh, the conventions used, the history, all of these things can be stored in attributes. All right, so variables and uh, data arrays. These are intertwined. So variables are not something that you're going to interact with much directly. It's more about the underlying data structure in the X-Ray library. So you're gonna interact with data arrays, but those data arrays have variables that have all this metadata 
about them. And you'll see the term variable used quite a bit in the X-Ray documentation. So these variables have dimensions, data, and attributes that describe the data array. It's important to notice that the variables cannot exist outside of a data set or a data array, so they have to have something to describe. Data arrays themselves, you can think of as an n-dimensional array. So just imagine a NumPy array of 1, 2, 3, 12 dimensions. But those dimensions have names, coordinates, and attributes. And data arrays are what we're most interested in here because they're what MetPy's calculations are fundamentally designed to work with. So let's look at a specific variable or data array out of our data set. And I'm going to look at temperature isobaric. So I'm going to use this dictionary style access. X-Array was designed in a similar way to Pandas to use similar accessing methods so that Pandas users can transition easily into multi-dimensional data processing, which is something that Pandas is not really designed for. Okay, so if we look at this temperature isobaric data array, up here we see our dimensions in bold. So this is using the time one dimension, the isobaric three, latitude, and longitude. And it tells us how many elements we have in each of those. So we have nine time steps, 31 levels, 81 lats, and 131 lawns. Here we see the coordinates associated with it. Again, that same bold and not bold that matches up here. And then the attributes, which we've got different attributes here. So these attributes describe everything in this data array. What's the long name of it? What units are it in? What's the grib variable ID? All of these wonderful grib things here, they get automatically populated for you. So that's great and relatively easy to understand. We've pulled temperature out and plotted it on maps in just the last couple weeks of MetPy Mondays. But now let's dig in a little bit deeper because here's where it gets interesting. Coordinates and variables. It's where X-Ray becomes very powerful but also potentially very confusing. So what is a dimension? Fundamentally, if you think of just mathematically, a dimension is an axis where everything but one degree of freedom in a given system is fixed, which is a really long way to say holding everything else constant and letting this vary. So imagine that you had our temperature grid. It has X and Y coordinates, let's say, and height. So a dimension would be X, Y, or height. If I am looking at a specific X, Y and height are fixed. If I'm looking at a specific Y, X and height are fixed. Or if I'm looking at a specific height, then X and Y are fixed. It's really no different in X-Array. It's just a way that we can access our data, sort of the coordinate axes. Though, you have to be careful because the next word that we're going to talk about is coordinates. Coordinates are really, so, you know, a NumPy array has dimensions. That's not a novel concept. But coordinates are like labeling that dimension with little tick marks on your plot, like, say, a matplotlib plot. So the reason this is really cool is that a single dimension can have more than one coordinate. So imagine how many times have you run into this when you're looking at data, that your data sets have maybe a different vertical coordinate convention. One data set is height MSL. Another data set might be height AGL or above ground level. And maybe another data set needs to deal with things in pressure. But fundamentally, you're working with the same observation. So you can have that height dimension, but you can add tick labels for all three coordinates, MSL, AGL, and pressure. So think of this as a plot that's got a couple of y-axes or alternate y-axes labeling. So let's look at dimensions and coordinates on this data. If I look at the dims of temperature isobaric, I get time, isobaric, latitude, longitude. 
So think of that as time, height, then our x and y coordinates. Now what if we look at the coordinates? Well, we get a little bit more information here. Uh, so we have time, latitude, isobaric 3, and longitude, just like we had in dimensions. But there's also this thing, ref time, which is a time that everything in this file is referenced to. Okay, fine. But what do the stars mean? Well, here's where we get a little bit more detailed, and it's the same concept as above where we were looking at the bolded things, the bolded coordinates. These stars mean that's what we call a dimensioned coordinate. So it corresponds to something that's in our dimensions here. Without the star, it's creatively called a non-dimensioned coordinate. Really, the main reason you care about this is dimensioned coordinates can be indexed. So you can use normal slicing and all of these things on them. Non-dimensioned coordinates cannot be indexed. They're not indexable but they can be very, very handy for doing some kind of auxiliary labeling of something. So maybe your data is on some UTM grid, but you want to label it as lat lawn because that's what's convenient for you to work with. So you can make it a non-dimensioned coordinate. As you can see, there are quite a few terms to go along with X-ray, but once you wrap your head around this idea that it's really an n-dimensional array, that's got some labels on those dimensions, and then some tick labels or coordinates on those, and you can put multiple of these arrays together into a data set, you've really got the basics covered. And you can see how this is the perfect format for meteorological data, where we're commonly dealing with things like lots of different dimensions and different coordinates. Uh, we're working with this highly dimensional data if we go all the way back up here, we can see things like, oh, I, I understand now how these two different isobaric coordinates, which are dimensioned coordinates, by the way, can correspond to our data variables here and why that's a useful thing to do. And you can start seeing some of the power of being able to index and slice and select into these data arrays and across these dimensions. So I hope that you found this useful, and I hope that you're enjoying our exploration of X-Ray. It's a very powerful tool. It's fundamental to MetPy 1.0 and how its calculations work. So investing a little bit of time to get good with this tool will return just great rewards in terms of your productivity and your enjoyment of using MetPy. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.